the movement of Wesco from Altix, five years on Altix, and now you're moving on to the main board. My next question is, what's the next target? One billion rand market cap. And when will that be? Ah, uh, that would be a guess. I, I wouldn't know, but that's our next target. Mm. The movement to the main board, though, for you, what does it represent? Is this just a question of raising your profile, or also you signify to the market that you've got ambitious growth plans that deservedly should put you amongst the top elite in the country? It's, it's both of those. Uh, it's a natural application from the old text. Old text is a wonderful um, starting point for any uh, private entrepreneurial company that wants to uh, go public. So it's a natural progression, but um, also we want to be benchmarked against uh, coal industry now, mm -hmm. our peers in the coal industry, not against the multitude of, of disciplines as you are in old techs. Sure. It opens us to uh, a wider range of investors, and it's strict to corporate governance. We, we're very into corporate governance. Mm -hmm. But it is a signal to the, to the market that says we have ambitious plans. Mm -hmm. uh, this timing isn't by accident. Uh, we sure. do have plans and we do need to ha raise our profile on the, mm. to the main board. I definitely know one man here at the JC who will be very happy. He's been stamping very hard for Altix and for its growth. His name, his name is uh, Noah Greenhill, so he'll definitely be very happy that you're moving on to the main board. But let's talk about also the implications for that move. It also means, of course, your costs of listing increase because uh, the cost for Altix and the cost for listing on the main board of the JC are different. But how much more dramatically does it make a difference? Uh, insignificant. Yeah, the, the costs are insignificant. Uh, the, the reporting structure, we report like main board anyway. Mm. So mm. to us, it's insignificant. We looked at the costs and it's, the, the benefits uh, make that amount insignificant you know, mm. in, in the life. Sure. Let's talk about the pipeline of uh, uh, projects that you are undertaking to try to justify your move to the main board and the reason why perhaps you should be attracting a larger pool of investors and removing perhaps the risk premium of being on Altex. What are you looking at in terms of projects to take the company to the next step forward? Well, it's, 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 it's common knowledge. It's out in the market that uh, we're looking to become a major mining force. Mm -hmm. uh, we're moving from the trading environment. We already purchased a mine last year, Kanyisa. Mm -hmm. We put a trading update out that uh, Kanyisa is going very well. It's going according to plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we put out a SENS announcement that we made a, a cheeky bid for <laughs> South African coal mining holdings. Uh, uh, and that's the route we're going to follow. It won't necessarily be South African coal mining holdings, but it will be that type. We're, going, we're raising our profile in the mining industry. Okay. And in terms of uh, South African coal holdings, that, how is that going? Uh, unfortunately, I can't discuss that uh, because okay. it's, a, it's a close but period. But you, you called it a cheeky bid, and I wonder why. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, we knew... Uh, we've been talking to SACMH for a while. Sure. And we knew there were other offers out there, but nothing had been published. So we slid a cheeky bid in there to really force their hand. Right. So right. That they could publish the offers and we could find out now what is on the table at SACMH. Uh, good luck to you. Good luck to you. Let's talk about uh, coal prices. What are you seeing? We heard the figures today coming out of China. Growth of 11.9%. Amazing, considering all the measures that they've been taking to try to cool down the pace of growth in that economy. What does it portend for coal prices? Right. We were in India a month ago at a coal conference. Asia will drive the international coal market. Mm -hmm. Not only China, everybody's focusing on China. But as an example, India, uh, by 2012, are going to be too short of 200 million tons of coal. They have to import that. Uh, and it is driving the export price up. If you look at international coal prices late last year, the price was in the low 60s, 61, 62 dollars. Right. I think yesterday it was trading at 86, 87 dollars. That is driven by the Asian market. Uh, the cold winter in, in Europe also drove this, uh, depleted their stockpiles, which is also a contributing factor. But we do not see in the short term coal going back to the levels mm -hmm. uh, on where it was last year. But though you do mention the fact that you are seeing stockpiles rising in South Africa, and yet we do know that ESCOM does need to increase its subject because we should have power. Yeah, it, the, the stockpiles that are increasing are a totally different type of product as what ESCOM, what ESCOM uses. ESCOM uses unbeneficiated, cheap, low-grade coal. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily low-grade, that's maybe the wrong word. Sure, sure, sure. Whereas the stockpiles that are growing are export-grade coal. Okay. It, uh, the pricing structures are completely different. Okay. And the stockpiles are growing in South Africa purely because there's logistical problems in getting the coal offshore. If, if the logistics were right mm -hmm. and TFR has has published they, they're having a large capital expenditure program to, to uh, rectify that situation. Yeah. That is the reason for the coal stock. It's not about demand offshore. No. It's, uh, the demand offshore is there. If they could get the coal to Richards Bay, they would sell the coal. Andrew Boyer, CEO, Westco, thanks very much and congratulations on the move to the main board of the JSC. Thank you very much.